Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about window cleaning marketing. Marketing for your business, what's the difference? What are you looking for? And uh, if you're in business or thinking about getting in business, it's going to be a good episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource. And you are here. How is it going? Well, it's another awesome day to listen to Nation, right? If it's your first time here, have a look around. We have tons of episodes, 250 episodes to catch up on. Some of them are even not bad. You got that to look forward to. (laughs) Uh, If you are not a first time listener, and you have been watching and listening all the time, I just want to say, what's up? And thank you for always, always listening. You guys uh, really help. A ton of you share this uh, show. You talk about it. You put it on Facebook. And it really, really helps the reach uh, for the show. And uh, I really appreciate it. There's another tier above that called an Epic Cool Kid. An Epic Cool Kid is, I hope you, But it's somebody who puts all your orders in through me, right? Shameless plug of the day. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource. I am a sales rep. That's what I do. I put orders in for people. And when I do that, I get credit for it. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. So if you want to put, uh, have me put your orders in, which I hope you do because you're amazing and I want to be amazing for you. Um, It's uh, 862-312-312. 2026 and of course i also own american window cleaner magazine which is absolutely the most amazing magazine for window cleaners that exists by the way i have a bunch of sealed ones still here uh if you want to get a subscription which i i know you do go to awcmag.com and get a subscription it's like 69 bucks a year And you get sticker sheets, and you get posters, and you get a magazine, and it comes to your door, and it's absolutely amazing. And I hope you get it also, because it would absolutely make my day. If you did both of those things, I would lose it. Oh, and follow me on TikTok, because why not? You're already in the industry. Why not surround yourself with some dummy and a microphone? Anyway. Uh, Yeah, so today we are talking about um, marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. I am a really big fan of advertising and marketing for, not a fan, let me rephrase that. I'm really, really interested in that. There's so much with that that interests me, like the psychological side, the the understanding of how people connect and how people listen and how to break through, and it's always, always, always evolving. If you've been doing this for 20 years, 10 years, by the way, what's up to the OGs? What's up? The original gangsters. Um, If you've been doing this for a really long time, you know. In the very beginning, I used to spend $500 plus a month on phone books. I spent more on phone books than I did all of my car payments for me and my wife. That was like way back when, 15 years ago. But that was marketing at the time. That was like your number one source. You had to do it. You had to be in every book. Every time a new book came out, you'd have to think about what you're going to put in that book. Right? I knew people in Texas, larger areas were in like 12, 13 books. It's nuts. But that was marketing. Now, if you advertise in the phone book, well, (laughs) I think you should not advertise in the phone book. The last year that I did it, I was, I, we dropped down, I think we we're at like $268 a month in phone books, and I got one job from it all year. So I like literally lost money by advertising in the phone book. Quite a bit, actually. Quite a bit. So for you guys who are out there, if you're doing phone books still, it just does not make sense. Uh, don't do phone books. But as things have changed, there's programs like EDDM, there's Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and all these other places. There's so many new ways to market. But each way that you market is a little bit different. There's just little slight differences between them that kind of uh, make the difference, right? 
And that's what we're going to talk about. So I hope you're doing advertising. I hope you're marketing, even if it's the free side and you're not spending it. Say you're a, a smaller thing, you know, smaller show. By the way, I am going to say before all of this, I still think absolutely the best paid thing you can do for your company is SEO. Um, for me, it's absolutely, absolutely nothing better than that. You'll have no better ROI on a paid advertising than SEO for your site, right? Get a site built, get it really built right, get it SEO'd, talk to Monk, um, but uh, get it done because if you get it done, that will be returning uh, money forever. And I don't think websites will ever go away, obviously, like phone books. So anyway, off my high horse on SEO. But the first one I want to talk about is EDDM. That's every door direct mail from the post office. Now, I know we just got done talking about phone books. And you're like, what? We're, you're mailing stuff? You're sending mail? Who, who, is, who is getting mail? I'm telling you, you still get mail. You may not even notice it. You get mail every single day, right? And by the way, I mail a paper catalog. I have a paper magazine, not catalog, magazine. If you uh, ever thought print was dead, I do not. I do not. The magazine has like tripled in its uh, subscribers in the past like year year and a half. There's a huge resurgence in paper in general. By the way, get your subscription. Uh, shameless plug, I had to throw it in there. But um, it's not just because things are awesome when you get them, but that paper feel, everything is going away from that. We have the digital version of the magazine on the site. You could go and read it digitally. I hate that. I hate that absolutely. I don't like digital. There's some things digital work. There's some things that, that, that don't. We'll talk about the Facebook ads and all the digital ads, but what about paper? What about something like EDDM? Now, with every door direct mail, let me just, if you don't know, if you have never heard of it, it's a program from the post office. Yes, the actual post office. And what it is, is that they will send um, a piece of mail to every address, every place on a route and a route is like you know depending on where you are 300 to 500 mailboxes basically and um when you do that because it's going to everyone there's so many more things they don't have to check things in they just put it in a box and then just everyone they wrap it in mail and put it in put it in put it in they don't have to think about it so you pay a lot less i'm talking about having a piece delivered and printed for like a quarter a piece crazy cheap but the trade-off with uh, eddm is that because you are sending it to every single house you know in a lot of areas every single house in that code may not be your customer so your return on investment is lower than normal let me not rephrase that your return on investment is high right the amount of money you make for the amount of money you spend but the actual um, people who call you, the response rate is lower than like if you were targeting. But how do you do EDDM? How do you market? What are they looking for, right? EDDM has to capture people and it has to capture people that are looking through mail, right? So a lot of things you see are like handwritten stuff when it looks like a handwritten thing because then people are like, oh, it's... That broke the noise, like somebody must have put this in my mailbox, but it's printed that way, right? That's one way to kind of break through. Now, if you're doing EDDM, you want to capture somebody in your target market and you need to capture them quickly with a cool picture. Boom, quick, color, look at it, right? But the problem is, is you don't know if it's at the top or the bottom, upside down, back or front. So you have to make the entire piece be eye-catchy just to make them stop. All they have to do is stop, look at it. If they can stop and look at it, you got them. I did a picture one time. Um, uh, it was called the gutter squirrel. And it was this photoshopped picture of a squirrel that was done up, looked like a lion. Like it had, it was like on the gutter edge and it, it was, um, uh, it was, um, 
a like roaring squirrel basically that was striped like a tiger it's pretty cool what that was was the entire front of my mail piece my entire front and the reason is, is because if somebody's going through and they're just glancing at stuff and they see this picture, they're like, oh, how clever. That's cool. People love that thing. Loved it. It got people to stop. Our response rate on that piece was incredibly high. It was always incredibly high because it made people actually read it. If your response rate sucks in EDDM, it's because people aren't actually reading what you're sending, right? Because we are a luxury business, but people need what we're, ser we're selling. So you have to have something that gets them eye-catchy. Big colors. Big, easy-to-read text. Right? Window cleaning could be the entire top of the long paper. Bordered with a stroke, full color. Has to be eye-catchy. You have to instantly stop them from everything else. Think about what you get. Maybe you do get catalogs. Maybe you get just uh, blank envelopes. What? gets a pot, uh, around the noise and it's that big colors boom right now somebody's looking at it on the back i always will put coupons on the back it's the dotted line around right if i put dotted lines around it people stop and look at it like a coupon even if it's not a coupon but it may just be like um uh, 20 window specials we do a lot of those right 20 window special uh 199 20 window special inside and outside, $2.99, right? Depending on what your pricing is, depending on what it is, I'll do that. I'll do that because 20 windows, easy to convey, quick to read, right? I'm not going to do $10 off with your, don't do an actual coupon. Nobody wants to see the actual coupon side of it, right? They want to just simply see what you have, what you're doing, and then they also want to know a quick price just so that the tire kickers get out right nice and simple but make it make it, there be value to it make it be eye catchy remember the shape and size matter also because they're going to be putting it if it's an oversized piece which almost all eddm is going to be just bigger go bigger go thicker go with something that in your hand it feels like something make it stand out your your junk mail at this point you need to be the least junkiest of the males. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <sighs> but another one uh, that we could talk about, EDM is great, by the way. If you haven't done EDM, um, it is one way to really connect with people on a different platform. So definitely look at EDM. Uh, but one of my favorite uh, all-time ways, other than, again, SEO, is by far trumps everything. Uh, but it's Facebook ads. Facebook is a really, really, really targeted local. Um, it is it is something that can be shared. It is something that could be talked about. Facebook done right can be done really, really well. And you get a really big bang for your buck because they know their audience, right? If you want to advertise to women between the ages of 40 and 70, uh, who own a home, you know, who do all the, like you can tailor uh, programs and people who you're connecting to, right? Now you're getting clicks. People are already on Facebook. Now they can share it. They can like it. They can follow it. Just means that they, I want to stay active with this, right? It's like signing up for a newsletter, but not. People don't see it that way, right? But what do you do with a Facebook ad? Well, most of you, or I should say uh, most of your spouses, because you're always looking for, you know, ads and things, you know, maybe have a little bit clearer, you know, business mind. But if a spouse is not ever in business and they're not thinking about business and they're on Facebook, they're seeing ads all the time and just not knowing their ads, right? So how do you get past the noise, right? Again, do something that's eye-catchy, right? We're not talking clickbait, Right? That, that gets thrown around a lot. That's like a cliche term. Click, clickbait is like, well, you'll never guess who number three is. Like, that's just, okay, it's blatantly wanting you to click and read through the article. But if you have some cool picture, something eye-catchy, something that's fun, that doesn't seem 100% business, it will catch people's attention. Remember, in Facebook, people aren't there looking for the most uh, proper, let me see the, 
well, I like your structure and your... It's not that. People are on Facebook to just see their friends, right? To see the places they follow, to be nosy, to just kind of relax. Well, tailor your ad to that. Be chill, right? You think people like vacations sitting on a beach, right? Warm sun, maybe that's your picture. What does that have to do with window cleaning? Well, this picture, sitting on the beach, beach weather's coming. Getting a nice tan is only weeks away. Why not let us clean your windows and free up some time, right? Why be at home cleaning the windows when you could be at the beach getting some sun? Whatever it is, you're tailoring that. Remember, we're a luxury. We sell clean windows, but we sell an experience. We sell light. We sell cleanliness. We sell free time. People always ask, like, how, how do you, you're selling window clean? No, that just happens to be like the byproduct of what we do. But if you clean your windows, not you, but say somebody who isn't a window cleaner, cleans their windows, it's going to take them all weekend, maybe all day, right? And it's going to turn out like crap. Well, do you want to really spend a Saturday cleaning your windows? No. No. So we give you free time. Let us do it. We'll do it during the week. Saturday comes, you can go sit on your boat all day. You can go golfing all day Saturday because of what we do, right? Sell the free time. But what you're trying to convey is a message to people who are relaxing and just looking and seeing their friends and looking at pictures of everybody else's trips and being jealous of everything else, right? Tailor that marketing and that ad towards Facebook, what people are actually looking for. Another big one I really enjoy because of the cost is so cheap is door hangers, five ups. You guys have heard that before, five ups. If you haven't, let me let me just tell you what a five up is. You do a house, right? You do this house right here. When you're done with this house, I go next door and I leave a uh, door hanger. I go across the street and I do three houses leave door hangers, and then I come back and do the one on the other side. It's five ups. I do one on each side and then three across the street. So it's a, you know, block basically. And what a door hanger or a five up does is I love the um, part in our glare, right? It just says basically, hey, your neighbors had window cleaning. If you need window cleaning, we're here, right? Now, let's break this down. Do we want to be super colorful? Do we need to do a picture of a beach? No, none of that. Because A, it's already at their house and the only thing hanging on their door or their mailbox or their whatever is our door hanger. So you're not breaking through the noise, right? You are trying to capture not the beach, not the friends, not the all the other stuff from all the rest of it, right? You can't take a Facebook ad and make it into a door hanger. What you're doing with the door hanger, people were there at your house. What the heck were they here? Oh, because they were doing our neighbor. They, they were literally here. Well, now you're tapping into people wanting to keep up with the Joneses. I'm in this neighborhood. Everybody else is getting their window cleaned. This is a thing. People do this. They get their windows cleaned. I didn't know that. I can't believe it. What, you think it was Tom? I bet you it was Tom. He's always doing... Now, because you were at their house... It means you were at their neighbors. You're already there. You're not doing these faraway marketing. You're right there, right? So I don't want to advertise like Facebook. I don't want to advertise like EDDM. I don't need full color. I need something that's catchy when they read it to make them read more. Window cleaning. That's it. doesn't have to be colorful on the front. I do a pardon the glare. We just cleaned your neighbor's windows and we could clean yours too, right? Pardon the glare. People like... I don't understand. Pardon the, we just did your name. Oh, we know, right. I got them to look at it. It, it apologized. So they're like, well, crap, what are this? What are they apologizing for? Right. And then they look on the back of that. Now you can have your pricing structures, maybe some services you do, but more importantly, your website, phone number, maybe an email, get a free estimate online right now. Check your house. Free, no obligation, quick and easy, whatever, right? So we're taking that and now we're advertising or telling people, which is marketing, a different way. 
your neighbors. I'm here at your house and did your neighbors. I'm in your neighborhood. Here's what I am. It's like yard signs. Yard signs exist because you're like, well, they were actually here. They put the sign there, right? Marketing is a far away thing. You know, you market because you're not actually here. It's a different connection. And if you guys have awesome ideas, jump on YouTube, uh, comment, tag me, whatever. Tell me some of your awesome ideas. But that's where door hangers are. Physically giving it to somebody and they can take it from that. Right? Uh, wrapping your vehicle. Wrapping your vehicle is probably the number two thing that you can ever do for ROI. Long lasting, low cost money. It's a money machine. To explain wrap, yes, you're like, well, it's like three or five thousand dollars, depending on how big of yeah, I know it is. That's a lot of money. Uh yeah. But it's like forever. Five thousand dollars, you're gonna have that vehicle for five, ten years with that wrap, depending on how good of a wrap it is. Years. Years. You have say your average ticket is three hundred bucks, right? A three thousand dollar wrap. You only need 10 customers to see that in five to 10 years for it to pay for itself. That could be done the first week. That could be done the first month. After that, it's profit. Everybody who sees it, right? But how do you do a wrap? The biggest thing with wraps is that people do them wrong. And I see them in my neighborhoods. I see them locally, you know, not window cleaning, but I see like plumbers. And if you have a wrap and you write a book, but then you also have a background that's like water. You need something that's eye catchy to make people go, oh, what is that? And read it within three, not even three seconds, one second on the road, right? If you have a wrap, the biggest word, most of the wrap should say window cleaning. Most of it doesn't have to be, your logo does not have to be bigger than that. No one cares about your logo. You care about your logo, right? There does not have to be that you also do pressure washing, roof cleaning, sidewalk washing, driveway cleaning, gutter cleaning, screen repair. You're not trying to tell everybody everything because the biggest words on there is your target market. Who are you mainly focused on? Yes, I know you probably want people to get gutter cleaning, but that's not your main target right now. It just isn't, right? So you need to advertise to the people that are big. And then when they go to your website, they see it or they talk to you, you're the one that's going to be upselling. Don't put it all on there. When you write a book, no one wants to read your dang book on the side of your car going down the interstate. Just don't, right? It's like billboards. People put all this information on billboards like people are reading billboards. You can't read a billboard. You're driving. Your passenger may start to read a billboard, but you're driving 70 miles an hour on the interstate you can't read a lot of stuff and then what do they do the very last thing they put is their phone number or, or web address well a more than likely not going to remember your web address unless it's awesome and b i may not even get to that part because i'm too busy reading about how you you know you know, help kids and you think that there's a son should find all the stuff that you're doing you're clouding what the message is boom window cleaning Maybe have in the background a big picture of you cleaning a window, right? Window cleaning, phone number, web address, big. All they need to do is be curious about you and then they can learn everything. No one is sitting there in a parking lot taking notes off of your thing. I mean, they have, they could. I've seen, I've had people take pictures of it because they want to save the phone number, which is awesome. But I want it to be easy and big and nice. And I want it to be easy for somebody to take a picture of it. They take a picture of it. It says window cleaning, phone number, and there's, uh, you know, the logo that's smaller on there. Like they can see everything they need and they can take a picture of it, right? Wraps will pay you back better than anything uh, uh, else other than, of course, the SEO. But anything um, that you have print-wise, it's going to be a wrap. It's going to be a wrap. If you're not wrapping your vehicle, you're very, uh, very much losing on driving a billboard. I'm telling you, if it's done right, if it's done right. And finally, it's a website. Now, I know I babble on this. Anytime I get talking about SEO, uh, I'm like so passionate. I just, that one thing is, fun, when done right, is absolutely amazing. Anyway, 
But the website, I get that a lot of times. People are like, hey, look at this website. What do you think? I'll never, I'll, I'll never really tell you good things because you don't need a pat on your back. Uh, but in bad things, I've seen a lot of bad things. Well, you're using clip art on your website. Like your logo is pixelated. Like there's a white back. Like when some website is done cheap because somebody saves some money, people don't understand that it's like making a TV ad, but with a, uh, you know, old um, camcorder. It's like, yeah, you have it, but would it have been better to just not have it at all versus a really bad version of it? It's another thing. People are talking about how much money you spend on a wrap. You three to five thousand dollars. You can spend that same amount of money on a website, and your website is good for years. With the right SEO, more people will see your website than every other ad you ever do. Right? And every ad you do sends them to the website. The website's like where people go to find out more information, and it looks like a, a donkey butt. It's awful, right? So what are you trying to focus on? You're trying to focus on image easy when somebody gets there no one wants to see a picture all the pictures of you cleaning glass that's, that's not the focus nobody goes there to see you or nobody goes there to see you brag about these big properties you do they go there to get the information they need why are they going well think about it if somebody wants something or say you want something you're going there you're going to find the phone number right you're going to get a little bit of information oh, are these guys local you might go to about us right you might just get a quick, oh, this looks really professional. Like they, These guys look legit. Picture of all the trucks together. A picture of a tech with their gear. This is what we look like. You know, letting people know all that information is way more important than showing somebody a big house. Because guess what? If I got a 2,500 square foot house and I'm calling you to do window cleaning, I don't want to see pictures of the 10,000 square foot house you did. Because I'm like, well, I sure don't want to do my dumb house. Right? If I have a, a 5,000 square foot house and I see that little ranch you did, well, I'm like, well, maybe my job's too big for these guys. Don't put pictures of you cleaning other houses unless there's something else going on in there. You know, if there's somebody cleaning a window and you're, you're, you're smiling or, or there's a picture of your tech in the, the, the um, star program that they run or anything like that, that's what you're focused on. Yes, there can be a gallery. But if you do analytics, look at the gallery. There's not a lot of people who spend a lot of time in galleries. Do pictures. Don't do clip art. Do things that make sense to your industry, but don't make that your focus. Your focus is quick info. Info in your company. Here's who we are. Here is why you choose us. What's your USP? Number one thing in your site should be your USP. By the way, your USP sucks. More than likely. There is maybe, maybe 1% of you who have an awesome USP. And I talk about this all the time and people are like, uh, I don't know, uh, my USP is me, you know, people really like me. No, because if it's not you, they're going to really like the other person. Like, that's not it at all. That is not a USP. You are not a USP. Because uh, if you were a USP, it means you can't have employees. And if you still think the mindset you can't have employees because people would really be mad they didn't have you, they'd be slightly disappointed for the first time because they got to actually know you. That's it. They're just going to fall in love with somebody else right? So with all that being said, websites are a different message than a wrap, door hangers, F, uh, Facebook ads, uh, EDDM, all that stuff, right? You have to understand why somebody's looking or what makes them want to look at that particular item. That is what you need to do. And that's what you need to focus on. Now, split testing is still big, right? Split testing, when you get to a website, so you do have somebody build it. The difference is they've already split tested because they know it works. They already did that. Split testing and a lot of other things do not create one piece of EDDM. Go, wow, this is amazing. I love it. And spend all your money on it. It's not the way that EDDM works, right? There's a ton of other episodes to go check out that. Anyway, there's some marketing. I appreciate you guys listening. I got one quick shameless plug to do. If you are on TikTok, follow me. It is jersey underscore WCR underscore nation. Dumbest name ever but go follow it. That'd be rad. And more importantly, if you ever thought, you know what, I get some value out of this show and I want to give Jersey a virtual high five of awesomeness. There is two ways to do that. 
go and get a subscription to AWC Magazine, first and foremost, right? Amazing Magazine. And I see that you, every time somebody uh, subscribes, I get notified. So I see that you are subscribed. And those of you who are not subscribed, I know. Uh, no, uh, but I do appreciate that. And of course, I am a rep for window cleaning uh, resource, windowcleaner.com. If you need any supplies, which I know you do, put all your supplies to me. I would genuinely love that. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. You can literally put it all in your cart and be like, Jersey, everything's in my cart, pull the trigger, man. And I would love to do that because that's how I make cheddar and that's how I live. So thank you for everything. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Until next week, make sure that you're doing your marketing on point, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.